Hello, my name is Brian Hungarter, Wealth Advisor at Girard, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Jordan Sohanger, also Wealth Advisor at Girard. And today we're going to spend five or so minutes talking to you about the importance of family communication about finances. How do we avoid conflict? How do we make sure everyone's on the same page? And how do we lead to a successful life together, melding love and money? So Jordan, why is this topic so important? Why is love and money so critical to discuss? Money is such a hot button for for couples, for families. I think in general, it's something that we definitely all need. It's something that's not going away. And people, for some reason, look at it very differently depending on on who you are and and who you're talking to in your household. It's, It's something that some people just absolutely avoid um, in their communication with their family. Yet it's something that is is vital and important as with any communication in any relationship or any household. Um, It's something that is probably even more important in today's world, in this pandemic or post-pandemic world we're living in, where a lot of couples, a lot of households I have personally seen struggle with with finances during this pandemic, whether somebody had lost their job or had to look at less income, um, yet still had the same debts that they had to pay on this less income. And it's more a more important topic now almost than ever, um, and almost a- allowing more time for these families to discuss it as well. I know I've been home more now than I I've ever been. So it's almost creating this perfect opportunity to open up this dialogue and have this important discussion. Jordan, with that theme in mind, obviously change has been running rampant these days. What are some best practices that you've seen for helping couples navigate change and being open with their discussions as it pertains to changes to their finances? Yeah. Absolutely. So I actually, instead of a, a avoiding or or not discussing changes in your finances, I actually have the exact opposite advice. I, I tell clients and, and couples and, and families to hold what I would call a, a financial state of the union almost. So it's, it's a specific and, and predetermined time that you set aside with your family or your spouse and you discuss your, your household financial picture, maybe your individual financial pictures, depending on your situation and your your expectations for your financial picture moving forward. And it's something that, hey, we're at the beginning of a new year here. It's a great time to to start having that. But it's also something, a conversation that should happen often. It should happen maybe weekly, maybe monthly, quarterly, uh, whatever works for you and your household. But something that should be an ongoing conversation to keep you without any secrets kind of on the same page um, and navigating this this these changes together. Um, and part of what you do in these particular conversations is you talk about where the household is at right now as far as its financial picture and then your expectations moving forward. And you touch base every so often to just keep that dialogue open. Jordan, I think you hit on a couple key points that we might want to expand on here, you know, terms like together and on the same page, right? Oftentimes, I know we both see clients where one spouse tends to take the lead in the financial picture or the financial decision making with the other spouse anywhere between 50 to 0% involved, right? Uh, How would you recommend that certain couples handle those types of situations? Yeah, for sure. I see that too. It's it's just not a good solution long term. So during these financial state of the unions, if you want to call it that, this is a perfect time for you both to kind of come together and write down certain budgets for, for current budgets and, and future budgets, as well as, like we said, your expectations or your goals for your households and individually. So examples of this would be to come together at these meetings and maybe start by writing down a basic budget, both where you're at and where you kind of want to be. The, the reason for doing this is to, yes, see what income you're bringing in, but also to understand what each of you are spending, maybe individually and collectively as a household. And I cannot tell you how eye-opening this experience has been for clients who just simply did not understand, say, certain areas that they didn't know they were overspending in. So it's important to write this down. I think we retain more when we do it. It puts both people on the same page without any secrets. Um, And it's an important first step, definitely in the first meeting that you have maybe every year, but maybe at at those specific intervals too, if it makes sense for you. Um, But then you also want to make sure that second piece of this is to align your expectations 
things together. If you don't communicate uh, what your, your maybe short, mid, and long-term goals are with your spouse or your household, then you're less likely to achieve those. So I would also together collectively look at what your short, short-term goals are, your mid-term goals, and your long-term goals are. And an example of each would be maybe for your short-term, that might look like something where maybe in the next 12 months or so, somebody has a particular goal of paying off, let's say, credit card debt. Maybe there's a game plan you can come together collectively and form a, a, a way to pay that down in the short-term there. Or maybe a mid-term goal is something more like five years out. Maybe you're looking to save for a home, maybe a down payment on a home and you are looking to, to find a way to do this uh, every so often periodically saving towards that goal. And then maybe a long-term goal is something more like saving for retirement. Maybe you're far enough away together or collectively as a household that you, you want to take a look and see in my 401ks, in my IRAs, my retirement plans, am I saving enough? Am I contributing enough? What are you contributing? Is your employer matching? Are we taking advantage of this? Um, definitely looking at the investments within those those IRAs and 401ks. Is this, are they meeting our objectives? Are they working for us, so to speak, so that we can retire when we want to? So these are all huge life events that are coming up at different intervals and having that conversation sooner rather than later will again, keep any secrets from, from the two of you or the household. Um, it will align your expectations and it will just kind of better set you up for financial success in the future. I know that we probably had some viewers out there who I, whose eyes got very, very wide when we use the term budgeting, right? I know the fear that can strike at some people. Um, nevertheless, our advisors are here to make that process easy for you, right? Jordan, what are some maybe for those that are not financially inclined, put it that way, right? What are maybe some easier ways that they can dip their toe in the water and start um, getting involved in these conversations? Definitely. It's it's a huge topic. I don't want it to feel overwhelming and you don't want it to feel overwhelming or else you're less likely to jump back into that next meeting. So great point. There are so many other things you can do to just kind of start the conversation. Probably one of my favorite is if you just jump online and you look at a free, they call money type or money personality quizzes. You can do it whether you've just started a, a relationship or you're, you've been together with your spouse for more than 10 years. It's such a cool exercise. Uh, to jump into together. You just answer a few questions um, and per how you answer those questions, you're kind of deemed to have a specific money personality or money type. And it gives you kind of helpful hints and tidbits specifically if let's say that money type differs to your spouse or to somebody else in your household as to kind of how to navigate uh, through that. So again, it's, it's a way to open up the dialogue, have the conversation, um, but definitely on a lighter note. With that said, Jordan, do you have any kind of last words or closing thoughts for this topic? I would say just have fun with it. It doesn't have to be a scary conversation. <laughs> it can be fun. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll feel, the more you'll realize it. It actually makes a lot of sense to be on the same page, um, not keeping anybody out of the loop or in the dark. Uh, it's definitely something positive and important to work towards. Yes, thank you, Jordan. That's excellent. And, and, and you raised so many good points and, and points that we cannot wait to bring up again with our clients in person, right? Uh, we look forward to getting out with you again, the listener, and, and sitting down across the table next to you and sharing these conversations about short-term goals and long-term intentions and making sure that the family's aligned on the same page and that everyone is involved and has their voice being heard because that's the most important way to ensure success.